Coach, it's been a tough one this year. Four and four in the conference, six and eight overall, and you're coming into tonight's game off one of the heartbreakers of the season. How do you work this with a young team? How do you keep their minds on, on business? Well, like you said, it's, it's been tough, and we do have a young team. And, you know, after the game uh, Wednesday, after a heartbreaking loss, you know, I just told them that, uh, you know, we still got 10 more games left in the conference and that we've got an opportunity to still make the playoffs. And, I, you know, I just try to give them as much positive things that I, I could do because it's no use, you know, uh, keeping it keeping them uh, centered on something negative so uh, we've been stressing the positive things the things that can happen we stress that we're a young team and before the end of the season uh, we can make our presence felt well being four and four it's pretty lucky a lot of teams have an awful lot of games into their season already some are 10 11 games by way of the draw but now you get an opportunity you had the break to get yourselves back together again the loss at Patterson was a tough one because of that but today you approach a Trenton game which is key and imperative for you to win to get over the 500 mark in the conference and really put yourself almost one game out of a playoff spot. Yes, right now, you know, we're tied for fourth with about three other teams. So every game that we play from here on in is, is a big game. Trenton is one of those teams that has the four losses, so it's a big game for us, but it's also a big game for, for Trenton. And I feel that if uh, we can establish something within the next three or four uh, games that uh, we've got an, a good chance of making the playoffs. And once you get in, anything can happen in the playoffs. Well, we've seen that throughout the years in this conference. You bang heads back and forth till the end. Sometimes people come up a little sore than the others and not ready to play. But Speaking of ready to play, you have a real good group of young players led by two sophomores back there at the guard spot. They played an awful lot for that championship team last year. Dwayne Kennedy out of Northwest Side and Stefan Beck out of Plainfield. Give us a little report on their progress. Well, they're both playing really uh, well for us, but uh, people have to realize that even though they got a lot of playing time last year, that they are sophomores. And last year, they had the experience of a Darren Watkins and a Danny Walton and Eddie Baum to, to look to, and now people are looking to them. And as sophomores, they're really not ready yet. Uh, we don't have the leadership that we need from them. This is the first time in my coaching history that we've had sophomore co-captains and you know they, they're, they're really working at they're trying to do a good job but they, they don't have the experience and this is going to be uh, a learning year for them. We have everybody coming back next year so you know we're trying to hold on and just do well this year and, and then look to next year. Charles, one thing you've always had, well, besides Watkins throughout your career here, has been some good size, not necessarily all the way through the lineup, you know, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, but one big man who controlled the center and was a force there. This year, probably lacking that in, every, in all aspects, you're going to bring on a young player and let him play tonight, a freshman out of Weequake High School. Well, uh, actually, Leonard is a sophomore because Leonard went to uh, Union County College last year, but he, he has really freshman experience as far as we're concerned. Uh, Leonard, I think, eventually is going to be a good player. He's got a load on his shoulders because we do lack size. You know, our forwards are six one apiece, and that's probably this is probably the smallest team I've had since I've been here in my 11 years. So uh, Leonard is, is an important uh, factor as far as we're concerned, and uh, he doesn't have that time to learn. Usually guys, uh, and I remember Melvin, Nelson coming in as a freshman and sophomore, he had an opportunity to sit back and watch some of the other guys play. Leonard doesn't have that, so he, we're going to have to throw him to the wolves, and hopefully he'll, he'll do a lot of learning a lot quickly. You made a good point, and, and really that is what it becomes, especially in this conference, the day in, day out of playing against such experienced players, and you've always been lucky enough to have that mix. This year the mix is all down to the left side of your, your ledger, as you said, with freshmen and sophomores. Uh, is it a lot more fun back to the teaching of the game itself? I mean, sometimes you get the idea, opportunity just to enjoy the kids play. Now it's, it's, you're seeing things happen that you've taught them. Do you feel that this is more of a kind of year that you enjoy? Well, not necessarily. I enjoy <laughs> the years that we win. You know, I've had uh, my first year, we had like eight freshmen and, and only one senior, but I had that se one senior who, had that, who gave us that senior leadership, and that was Dave Martin way back in, in uh, 82. Uh, this year, we don't have any of that senior leadership, and it is a lot more teaching. And plus the fact that I think what's hurt us, too, is I haven't had the time that I've normally given my teams. I have added responsibilities outside the basketball field uh, arena, and, and um, because of that, I haven't had the time. I haven't been able to put the time in that we really need, especially being a young team. And I think the probably the biggest thing that really hurt us, and people don't, won't realize this, and I don't know what other coaches say, but uh, the new starting period of November 1st, especially with a young team, really hurt us. I needed those two weeks because we do have to teach more with this team than any other team I've had. Charlie, with this young team, what problems does Trenton State uh, pose for you today? 
Well, Trenton State has always uh, poses problems for us. Uh, you know, they were on an upswing. Uh, we went down to Trenton and we won our first game down there in a close game. And, and you know, they've got good talent. They kind of turned things around since that game, and they've been playing really, really well. Uh, we we know we're in a situation that we need to win, but they also know they're in a situation that they need to win. They want to make the playoffs. So um, I think defensively. If uh, we don't get the job done defensively, we're going to be in a little bit of trouble. And we're going to have to try and control the boards. Historically, our teams have done really well on the boards. But because we have such a small team, uh, if we don't box out and play good half-court defense and, um, and rebound, we're not going to do well. Coach, you always do a fine job with them. I'm sure we're going to get a good show. I know the kids will work hard, and I'm sure they've worked hard throughout. We wish you a lot of luck down the road the rest of the season. Good to know that you're still in that playoff hunt. It's always a pleasure to have you around playoff and tournament time. My hero. John, they go out at a different route. Uh, they bring the big man is in the middle, uh, and today, uh, I guess well, it's... Well, Herman Proctor is not dressed for tonight's right. game, so uh, Mike Callahan and uh, Raymond Carson are probably going to be uh, looked to to do go that, up. that forward, and uh, a surprise starter, Carl Foranoy, a 6'3", sophomore out of Bloomfield Tech of Newark, Gets the starting nod today in place of Herman Proctor. Will the speed of Jersey City be a factor? I don't believe so. I think uh, uh, they will press. Charlie doesn't do anything flashy. He has a sound philosophy. They'll play hard. Defensive pressure up. They're not running as much as they used to. And now we're going to take time to... Not running as much as they used to, but uh, as we have an opportunity, we'll take a short break and be back with the tip-off of this one right after this. Well, Trenton State team. Well, John, they list Tony Hall at 6'6". Mike McLaughlin is 6'7", so there's some nice size out there for Trenton State. And we'll get our first look at Tony Hall, who's transferred in. McLaughlin's had a good career here at, tr at Trenton State. John, in and out of the starting lineup throughout, but he's done a good job as number 31, Raymond Carson, steals the tap and gets Jersey City the tap, but they lose it to Trenton State, so Trenton will have first possession. And Tw Gothics back in the man, starting as normal. McLaughlin got it in to self. It was blocked away nicely and recovered by Trenton State. Great penetration move by Kelly Williams. He has the first deuce of the evening. And here's Jersey City sideline break. Carson looks to go one-on-one, -on -one and they back it back out. For State to be successful, they're going to have to get a lot of easy baskets on their transition game. First foul called against Mike Callahan, an offensive one by referee Lou DeGeorge. Working with Lou DeGeorge will be Brian Gribben. And Bob Kelly Williams had a very slow start, broke his leg prior to preseason, and basically uh, is just coming into form. Really didn't play very much in the first half of the season. This is the aforementioned Williams with the ball right now, covered by Stefan Beck. Andre Self, McLaughlin has the ball now against Kennedy, a very big mismatch. They can't cash in, but McLaughlin gets his own rebound and puts it back in. Mike McLaughlin looks a whole lot different early, John, than we've used to seeing. Very aggressive, an awful lot quicker on his feet, John, than I'm used to seeing. Well, one of Donnie Marsh's uh, hopes is that they can limit the Gothics to uh, one offensive shot and uh, hopefully put him back on the defensive end. Carson, quick jumper from the foul line, won't go. Tony Hall, the rebound. Trenton State, uh, in talking to Donnie Marsh uh, yesterday, uh, he's not getting as many transition points on an up and down game as he would like. And uh, they've really worked on it during the break, and he feels it's going to be uh, a real advantage for them during the second half. John, we talked about things like that as, uh, you, you know, you talk about fast breaking the ball, but when I talked to Donnie on the beginning, in the beginning of the season, as we see Beck cash in a fast break for Jersey City, he mentioned he thought he had the personnel now to move the ball up the court at a much quicker pace. Plus, he has depth, and that's a concern to Charlie Brown. And uh, also, he has a lot of athletes on that floor. A lot of uh, athletes, John, right now a little undersized as a great move by Andre Self. He cans the little bank or from about four feet, but his head fake, John, sent everybody up in the air. I've never heard uh, Tony Marsh so high in a player as Andre Self. He believes he is definitely the best defensive player in the league. 
And that's going to be a key tonight for the Lions. If he can put a lot of defensive pressure on the Gothic guards, that could be a contributing factor. Long jump shot by Raymond Carson is no good. The rebound knocked out of bounds by Jersey City. We've played just over two minutes. It's 6-2, to two, Trenton State. Yeah, in addition to Self being a, a great defensive player, he's very, very quick with the ball. He's able to penetrate. He's going to create a lot of offense for the uh, big people in the block areas. Tony Hall called for the travel. He went to a, a jump stop there trying to speed slid out from under him. Well, you know Tony Hall must be a player because uh, Kevin Wise, who we saw last year, is number four or five in the depth chart of the front line. That's changed very quickly, and Kevin Wise, a tremendous Juco player. This is Callahan with the ball, looking for help, finds Kennedy all by himself. His lay-in is good. Dwayne Kennedy has his first two points of the game. It's 6-4. Charlie Brown's had an up and down season, John, and I spoke to him when we did a, our pregames as Hall tries to jump hook that won't go. There's a lot of confidence in a new player. What the, They had a four-man perimeter game and just let Tony Hall roam the middle in an isolation situation. John, to, uh, to get back to that story, I talked to Tra uh, Charlie Brown prior to the game. He mentioned, he goes, if we win this one on TV as Canada cans a three, he says, we will personally Make sure you do every home game of the Gothics throughout the career. <laughs> he said, if it has to come out of my pocket, you'll be at the game. 7-6. Oh, nice block by Raymond Carson on Cornell Nelson's lay-in. Jersey City, though, hustling it up. Carson from straight on deep. Nothing doing. Fight for the rebound. Comes to Flournoy. His lay-in goes. Well, yes. size, Bob, in this conference doesn't mean a whole heck of a lot because Jersey City has been successful over the years Without with those any, great 6'4", right? 6'5", six, six, people who can get up and down the floor and off the floor very quickly. This is Williams from three, and Kelly Williams has the tray, and he has five. We're tied at nine. So far, very well played on both ends of the floor. Like this kind of game too, John. A little bit of inside play, but an awful lot of perimeter play. Yeah, now there's uh, the L cut of uh, Charlie's offense where the guard hits the wing, goes back, gets a return, and an L cut off the high post. If that doesn't happen, the high post goes, and they play a two-man game. McLaughlin rebounds, floor noise misses, kick out to Williams was long, and it'll go back to Jersey City. And with that, the whole staff for Trenton State stood up and said, relax. Charlie Brown, Bob, likes to do a lot of isolations in, in their offensive sets and take advantage of the athleticism or a poor matchup. This is Callahan, stops at the foul line, is blocked partially by McLaughlin, picked up by Carson. His shot is blocked by Hall. Good defense by Trenton, team defense. They kick it to Kennedy. They left Speck open for a second. Great look by Kennedy to Callahan. Dwayne Kennedy's coming of age. Big perimeter game here using Mike McLaughlin strictly as the inside man. McLaughlin, great size. It looks like he's hit the weights dramatically over the seasons. Yeah, and he can go inside or outside. Ball tipped away by Jersey City State as we get a look at the back of Kelly Williams, who has five in the early going, to go along with five for Dwayne Kennedy, who we just That's so saw important play. for Kelly to get a good start because he, he is that kind of a player. Stolen away nicely by Carl Flournoy. He's a great story in himself, John. Played at Little Tech, Bloomfield Tech, and uh, scored a, a bushel full of points throughout his career, John, and was uh, you know, playing in a different kind of a game setup because small schools, and it really did take him a year plus to learn the game, but he's got the body and the ability to play this one. Let me tell you that last series, Jersey City's getting one man open. Part of Charlie Brown's philosophy, he runs the floor with five people, and one defensive mistake or laziness on, on the part of one defensive player, and there's always an open player wh which makes the transition game go. They put a lot of pressure on you for that defensive balance against their break. Flournoy with confidence hits the two-pointer. Flournoy's size, very deceptive. He's yeah, long Carl, arms, strong. Carl's getting an early nod in, in place of Proctor tonight, and if he can get a good start, that's going to be so important for his confidence. Great help by Stefan Beck as subs check in. Number 50, Derek Wright for Trenton State. And number 13, Ed Dunbar. 
and number 21, Dwayne Smith for Jersey City. And but both. With, that, with that, Trenton will take a timeout. We'll take a break. 13.59 to go, 13 to 9, Jersey City on top. It's out, uh, there'll be their ball. 13.59 to go, a tick under 14 minutes. And John, State's played, uh, you can't say State because it's Trenton State and Jersey City, but the Gothics have played a very good first six minutes, and that's important to come out of the shoot. Played very, very well, very consistent on both ends of the floor. This is Ed Dunbar, uh, a new addition out of Ferris High School in Jersey City. Jump shot by Carson was no good. It went off the foot of a lion, and I think the Gothics may have stolen that one, John. Derek Wright, number 50, has checked in for Trenton State out of Ewing High School, so real close to home. And the other person for Jersey City, number 21, Smith. As we see Carson can a jumper. Smith is out of academic of Jersey City. Raymond Carson has two. John, important to get it, but did you know what I always think has been amazing, and I know the same way you recruited, the group one and the group two guys play a different style of ball. When you bring them into this conference, they're not used to the banging. No, and that's the process that uh, Coach Brown is going through right now with these young players. But, you know, he has a system that is, that is still conducive to getting people playing time with that extended defensive pressure. You can come in. You don't have to be an offensive threat. If you play good defense and create turnovers, you can still get your playing time. And that's been part of Charlie's success over the years. The last three was by Kelly Williams, the man who has the ball. And a good steal by Andre Self to get Trenton back on the offensive. Ball stolen away nicely by Jersey City that time. Flournoy with great hustle and a foul called on number 25, Andre Self. More subs to check in for Jersey City as Charlie Brown will continue to use that system of just filing them in, funneling them in. And Donnie Marsh will also do the same. He has a lot of confidence in the length of his bench. For Jersey City, number 30, Leonard Uli out of Weak Wake High School, a six foot seven inch sophomore will check in. Lions man to man out of bounds. Uh, there's that play, they've made a living on that and Dwayne Smith puts it back in. Also in for Jersey City, number 33, James Stanton. Stolen again by Jersey City off the pressure. Mike Callahan comes up with that steal. And John, you talk about things that are generic and will happen forever. It's Jersey City's press is definitely generic. It looked like that extended 3-2 press. And I'm sure, uh, although it looked to surprise the, the Lions, uh, I'm sure has been worked on all week long. Jonathan Hayes, a six foot eight inch freshman from Cinnaminson checks in. Short jumper by Callahan, no good. Rebounded by Cornell Nelson. So Donnie Marsh with some size brings in a 6'8 freshman and a travel called against number 50, Derek Wright. Jersey City will check another one in, John. And once again, as usual, the Gothics will test our memory. And number 23, Leon Barnes checks in for Jersey City. Barnes, a junior, six foot two inches tall out of Orange High School. The chess match is on. Counter substitution patterns by both coaches. We talk about body size, John. Yuli is enormous. Now, this is where a, a coach will get those gray hairs again. When, when you've uh, substituted, he really doesn't have a starter in the game. And uh, Trenton State pressure or any defensive pressure against a group that is not used to doing that or working together uh, has a difficult time in half-court execution. Number 22, Walter Morton, set to check in for Trenton State. Another steal by the Gothics. Dunbar leads the break and flies in and gets called for the offensive. A good job by Jonathan Hayes to stay in here and take it. I don't know what the call is. Yes, it is. Sean Merritt will check in for Jersey City State. Replacing Dunbar. Merritt's a freshman out of Palmyra, John, way down south. There's the trap, and Trenton State helps out Jersey City. Long pass ahead of the field. Walter Morton blocked nicely underneath by Yuli. That's recovered by Wright. He dumps it in to the big guy. Hayes, he misses. Rebound goes to Wright. And a foul is called on Leonard Uli. John, Uli at 6'7", only a sophomore boy. There's some body size on that young man. 
That time, uh, Trenton State uh, recognized the pressure, got the ball to Andre Self, who has the quickness to dribble away from the trap. And what I liked about him is he kept his head up and saw the floor, made the long court pass down there for the easy attempt. And then you must emphasize the attempt on that one. State on. in good man-to-man -man pressure. This is Walter Morton out of Seton Hall prep. Jumper by Wright is good. Wright has his first two. It's 17 to 14, Jersey City, and the state turns it over again, and I don't know if Charlie's gonna let the players rest much longer. And another foul called this time as Andre Self. Andre Self has gotten lightning quick. He sure has. Uh, right now, state up 17, 14, so Charlie will let them Gain their legs a little bit and gain some of that experience, which he's going to need down the stretch. Well, as you would say, make one or two more mistakes, <laughs> whatever comes first. Well, you know, sometimes as a coach, you set goals for teams, especially if you substitute by units. Hayes is fouled by Leon Barnes. John, it's very rare when you get your six-foot-eight-inch center to kind of make a baseline move from deep corner. It's a different type of team for Donnie Marsh, uh, allowing them some freedom. He he's, has a lot of confidence in their athleticism and, and their ability on the floor to create. Dwayne Smith, a bigger guard, trying to cover Andre Self. This is Walter Morton. Into Self. Kick back into the corner for three. No good by Nelson. Rebound down. And stolen again. The rebound was by number 21, Smith, and a nice steal as Trent State got back quickly on defense. Nelson open for three. Back of the rim. Rebound. Yuli tapped around. Back to Nelson. Morton had a nice seal to the inside that time. Self just missed him. Derek Wright tries to go one-on-one -on, -one on Smith. He may have tied himself up. Walter Morton, good hands to get the loose ball, and his fadeaway, and he's fouled. Trenton State does a lot of uh, post-up ball side, and what they do is flash the opposite forward to the high post where they work a partner system on a high-low and just keep revolving those people back and forth. And the guards, of course, pass in, in exchange and look to dribble drive the gaps. Beck and Canada return for Jersey City. Tony Hall for Trenton State. 9.55 to go. John, very low scoring, 17 to 14. Yeah, I think we're going to see Trenton State uh, try to get into uh, mixing up their defenses a little bit. Uh, uh, they like to extend the court to three-quarter, half, 3-2 uh, type of uh, trapping zone. And uh, Donnie Marsh, for something new for Trenton State, uh, has been working on a half-court 1-3-1 trap. And I tell you, I think it's a great move because the, he has the exact kind of athlete you need to run that defense. 1-2-2 two, two zone here, we see. Candidate for three. Little short, rebounded by Hall, knocked away from him by Beck. <coughs> he gets it right back out to his partner. Beck for a deep three, banks it off the back of the brim. Morton, the rebound, he keys the break to self. Great move by Andre Self to can the flying layup. One of uh, the Achilles heels of states over the past couple of seasons has been perimeter shooting. Inside to Yuli, his one stepper. Good drop step by Yuli. He's fouled by Tony Hall. John Yuli is an honest 6 7 <laughs> as they come. Carl Flournoy will check back in for the shooter, Le Leonard Uli, after he takes his two. Trenton State now leads by one, 18 to 17. We've been back and forth in the first 11 minutes of this one, nine minutes and 12 seconds, just under 11 minutes gone. Of course, Uli, one of the uh, five or six new additions to the Gothic team mid-year. So uh, Charlie's been working, I'm sure, very hard during this break of trying to get these people up to speed. and. Uh, not only in terms of learning, but uh, physical conditioning. And that's why you're seeing a lot of substitutions in and out because they're not ready to play uh, in this conference for an extended period of time. Yuli did showed a good touch off the foul line, John, though. Can both of his. Self breaks the press by himself. 
and tries to get the offense started. Hayes with a good post up, then tried to pass it out. Smith had trouble with it, but gets the lay in and the foul. 23, uh, excuse me, Leon Barnes on the break. Had some trouble in the middle of the court with the ball, John, but used his body tremendously to keep Tony Hall away from him and get the layup and the foul. Stayed at its best. Transition offense. Leon Barnes, first deuce of the game. He'll have a chance for the conventional three-pointer. And talk, talking to Charlie before the game, this, this is a monumental game for Jersey City. Uh, they go to uh, Montclair on Monday for a makeup as we see offensive rebounds and a slot. Great block by number and 54 Hayes. And I'll tell you what, they may complain, but Lou DeGeorge did exactly what you're supposed to do. There's no taunting allowed, and as it came up, he didn't, have, he didn't want to take any more of it. It'll be a two-shot technical on the player, too, I believe, John, for this. And well, that goes as a personal foul, too, well, I believe. Lou DeGeorge has been around this conference for a lot of years. He knows the intensity and that he, is exhibited over 40 minutes, and uh, he knows this when is it's a time must game charge. for both right. people or both teams, and he's not letting it get out of hand. Mike McLaughlin checks in for Jonathan Hayes as Hayes picks up the technical. He made a great block, John. It was a great block, but uh, in Lou DeGeorge's estimation or opinion, the taunting did go on. Uh, there could have been some pointing, and that's a technical. After the block, there was a problem, and we saw that. Uh, we saw something happen, but irrelevant to that, you know, I mean, you got everybody's told to keep their heads underneath. There's yeah. also a new NCAA fighting rule. Uh, you have the first time you get into a fight and get ejected, uh, you're on a national warning. The second fight you're in, you are done for the year. So that fight we saw on TV about two weeks ago had 21 players <laughs> in a problem. Great pass down to Callahan. He travels. Beck with an excellent touch pass into the key to Callahan, who's called for the travel. Checking back in, Nelson and Kelly Williams for Trenton State. They'll replace Walter Morton. And number 44, Tony Hall. 1-4 set out of bounds. Great hustle by Jersey City to continue the trap. Now what Trenton State needs to do is they need to set that 1-4 higher, Bob, past the top of the key. What they're doing is setting it almost below the foul line. They need more room to work on the inbounds pass, especially if they're going to reverse it to the inbounder. Turnaround by Nelson was no good. The rebound was knocked out of bounds off a of Jersey City State player, so it'll be a new 45-second clock for the Lions who trail by five, 23 to 18. Good ball movement by Trenton again. Self with a great penetration move. His banker won't go, but the defense collapsed all over him, John. Great kick out by Stefan Beck to Carson. Good dump down to Callahan. He loses the handle, and here comes Trenton State the other way. Andre Self kicks it to Kelly Williams, and Kelly Williams, ever the confident floor leader, John, just said, well, we don't have numbers where I like it. Excellent defensive pressure by the Gothics, forcing Trenton State further out toward the half-court mark. They bring McLaughlin out high. There's a high-low. Good job by Cornell Nelson to sail the shorter man, Kennedy, and get an easy deuce. At that time, they had much better spacing. Long jumper by Carson's no good. Callahan fights for the rebound, and he knocks it out of bounds. Into the game for Jersey, uh, excuse me, for Trenton State, number 42, another new face, Tariq Bethea. Bethea is a sophomore out of Trenton Central. And that was him with the ball right then, as Nelson is playing the back part of that press break. Self may have gotten away with a push off on Carson. McLaughlin gets a spot, good penetration, and his little turnarounder won't go. Great hustle by Bethea, but an even better block by Callahan. 